Welcome. I'm Michael Voss, the Dean of Career and Technical Education here at Mesa Community College. And today I wanted to do a short web navigation uh, training on using Gray Associates Program Evaluation System. Uh, I'm going to just start here at the Mesa Community College homepage and show you how to get to the resource uh, without having the link. Uh, but then, of course, you know, we'll send the link out as well. Uh, so you can get to a lot of resources relative to CTE by going down to the Employee tab. And we've created a Career and Technical Education link for employees. Now we're still populating all of this, uh, but the Gray's program, uh, Gray Associates Program Evaluation System is a labor market tool. So you would find it here under Labor Market Information. So once you go here, uh, you'll find Gray Associates Program Evaluation System. This is the link, and obviously the, the training that we're doing is happening right now. So uh, when you go in this system in the future, you'll be able to see this training video as well. So let's go to the link. When you go to the link, uh, it's going to bring you to this page. It will likely prompt you for a password uh, when you first log into the system. So uh, since I've logged in before, it didn't ask me for that. Uh, it's going to remember where the last user was uh, when they were navigating in the system. So it may uh, bring up on a variety of tabs uh, depending on where the last user was. Uh, we have one institutional login right now that we share. Uh, and uh, again, I'll send that login uh, info out uh, if you feel like you want to use the, the tool. Uh, but this uh, overview tab here is just a little bit of an overview of the system. So what it's doing is uh, we've contracted with uh, this vendor called Gray Associates. And they pull labor market information for us from uh, all the, the major labor market uh, indices and student demand indices. And, and they take all of that data and they analyze it and, and sort of put it into a, uh, a scorecard system and a ranking system that's driven by the rubrics that we set up. And it categorizes the data into four different types, either student demand, employment uh, slash labor market opportunity here in the blue, strategic fit for a uh, community college mission, and, and the competition analysis. So in a big picture, these are some of the, the data points uh, that the data, uh, the system pulls in. You don't need to be an expert at this. In fact, uh, you know, unless you're the person setting up the system, uh, you, you probably don't need to even look at the overview tab again. Uh, definitions tab, again, uh, provides the specific definitions on all the 40 different data points that are in the system. We won't focus on that today. Uh, we probably don't need to focus on filters uh, or even the scoring criteria in this particular training. Uh, just know that the scoring criteria has been critically evaluated by folks here and with input from Graves. And using that, we've created several different bookmarks uh, from which to evaluate the data presented. So this is important. Uh, when you first go in the system, depending on what you want to glean from it, you need to choose a bookmark. Uh, Gray's had a baseline one based on their expertise that they set up the system as a default. Uh, but I've since gone in and reevaluated all the data points and, and the data specifically to create some additional uh, rubrics. So. If you're coming in to view uh, all of the programs that we have or all of the programs that we could offer from a transfer lens, uh, you'll want to use a transfer rubric. It weights uh, bachelor's programs higher. Uh, it looks at different wage criteria uh, that are uh, data points for when people graduate, graduate from bachelor's programs. And it looks at that different than some of our traditional one and two year career technical programs are really designed to get people working upon completion of that level of training. So uh, when you look at the CT rubric, it views things from a different lens. It uses uh, different salary benchmarking, for example, gainful employment wages. And uh, it also, both of these take into account what percentage of the national workforce uh, requires what level of academic preparation. So CTE weights it more 
heavily for associate degree and below. Transfer weights it more heavily for bachelor's degree and higher. So uh, every single time that you come in and do a query, make sure that you choose the lens that you want to look from. If you just wanted to isolate for uh, CT CCL certificate programs or CT associate degree programs, uh, choose that rubric. Okay, uh, so choose a rubric. So uh, today I'm going to choose a career and technical rubric. So make sure you have that dialed in the system. Now once that's in there, it's going to pull all queries from that lens. Uh, you might be curious, most of you are going to want to see a program scorecard for your particular program. Uh, we will periodically send that information to you, uh, but if you need to uh, look at it sooner or you're doing some curriculum changes and you want to see what's the current data right now in your program, you can go into there. I'm going to start with program rank though. So what this will do, if, if we just choose a market, and so you have all these selectors on this side over here, uh, you want to choose a market. And so we have lots of markets in here. Uh, S&D is Southern Dobson. Uh, so that's the market that we've defined where 85% of our students live and, uh, and attend Southern Dobson. But we also have a Red Mountain market, which is a much narrower market around the 202 uh, that identifies the, the students who go to that campus. Uh, but we, we have other uh, markets. We can look at the entire city of, Arizo uh, city of Arizona or Maricopa County, National. We're also asking them to load in particular cities because as we work with our various economic development partners, uh, we might need to pull the market data from that perspective. So I'm going to start with Southern Dobson. And if we don't identify any other uh, SIP codes, uh, what it's going to give us is all uh, the SIP codes that exist uh, in the SIP code index. So what you see here is everything that we could offer at Southern Dobson ranked by strength of programming. So you, you see some overall scores over here. Uh, the green area corresponds to student demand. Blue corresponds to labor market. Yellow is strategic fit for a community college mission. And gray is competition. And uh, these are scaled scores. So when you change your market lens, the uh, perspective on the data changes. So right now we see electrician is a 56. If we look from Maricopa County uh, market, these scores may change a little bit. So let's just see. Now you see electrician has dropped down to number three from that lens point and the score is 51. The, oh, the actual scores don't matter that much. What matters is that you're looking at the what the numbers mean on the scaled scoring. So in this vantage point, anything higher than a 33 is the 98th percentile of positive data for that particular market. Uh, and I really sort of think that our uh, programs that we want to offer, especially if we're going to start something new, you want that stuff, uh, for the most part, performing the 90th percentile overall. And you want to have a strong student demand uh, and labor market demand for that program. So a couple different metrics you want to look at. Obviously, it needs to be a good fit for what we're doing as well. So, uh, again, everything on here is a... a uh, a good fit. Everything on here goes down to 33. Now, if you wanted to look at some current programs, uh, we're going to load different sets in here, but uh, first one was the default, the data that we provided to Graves, and that was iPad. So this is uh, the graduates that we reported over a five-year period and what programs they're in. So if I select that, It'll give us a more more of a sense of current programming or recent programming here at uh, Mesa Community College and how they all racked and stacked. Uh, I'll be loading in our current SIP code list as well. Uh, if we want to look at the entire Maricopa County, all the SIP codes currently reported in 1718, uh, you could kind of see those arranged. Now, I'm going to go into a uh, another area. Let's say if you wanted to look at just one of these programs, uh, you could 
click on it and it'll take you uh, to just that scorecard. Uh, if you know your SIP code, you could type that in in this toolbar here. Uh, you can just type a search uh, and that'll work. If you don't know it, but you, you know kind of what the name of it would be, uh, so I could type in automotive, for example, here, and it'll give me everything with a automotive title. Okay, and maybe I want auto mechanics tech or a collision repair. Uh, I could also do, uh, I want to know everything that's um, computer. So there's a lot of different ways to find what you're looking for. If you can't find something, uh, you just ask. But all of our program pages you know, have SIP codes, so you can take a look at those. I'm going to go with this, uh, maybe a computer programming general. Okay. So if you choose <clears throat> just a single item, and you're in the program rank, you're just going to see one item here. And this tells you uh, kind of on a fit level how that works. But more valuable to you, you want to go to the program scorecard. Okay. So this is going to give you all the data points in the system and tell you how this score is derived. Now, uh, the way that scoring works, uh, Grace tries to make it super easy. Green is good, red is bad, yellow is somewhere in between. If you want to see exactly what these colors mean on a percentile level, you can look down here. Like, real green is real good, uh, real red is real bad. And so here we're looking at computer programming and is it a fit for a community college? Uh, well, you see a lot of uh, student data here in green. Uh, inquiries means that these are uh, inquiries received. Someone went into a portal at a uh, proprietary school or another college and submitted, you know, I want uh, information on computer programming. Uh, and so of the participating uh, schools in that data set, there was 286 uh, submissions over the last year. So this is generally over the last year what you're seeing here. And, uh, and and that's a relatively high number for the market that we've chosen, a county level market like Maricopa. So uh, that's in the 98th percentile, 98th percentile of all uh, inquiry data that's in the system. This is uh, very interesting as well. You have Google search analytics data. So how many people have gone into Google search and searched by one of 25 keywords associated with this program? And uh, there was 1,500 searches looking for this program in the last year. So that's really good. That's good demand data. Uh, you can see that uh, there was also a lot of completers in this space. So in Maricopa County, there was 722 completers. And that gives a really high score. We weighted that pretty highly for what we're looking for right now. Although uh, it's 44 less than the year before, so that's maybe not a good number there. In gray, this is the competition data. So uh, there's six institutions in this space. Uh, one, one competitor went away. Uh, that's viewed a little bit favorably. And you can kind of see some other things, what people are paying cost per click on Google search. You can see average program sizes here, uh, and then how much national distance education competition there is in the space. Blue is uh, labor market and a lot of this data up here is burning glass and that's a, uh, a job posting uh, engine uh, sort of a, a way that they sort of scrub jobs to deduplicate them and see what the posting intensity is. So for computer programming there was 747 jobs posted in the last year which is, it's a good number, it's in the 90th percentile, as evidenced by the light green down here, but there was 512 less jobs uh, year over year. Okay, so that's a pretty big drop, so it kind of takes a hit there. Uh, the Bureau of Labor and Statistics says that there was uh, a total of uh, 1,267 jobs in the space and uh, 38 openings, so a little discrepancy between what Burning Glass says here and what the Bureau of Labor Statistics say. 
Uh, and then it, it shares the the wages associated with, uh, and this is probably the 25th percentile here. ACS wages, these are the uh, bachelor's level wages. So bachelor's uh, prepared people 30 and less made this. Bachelor's prepared people uh, in this age range made that. Uh, and then uh, those programs are reporting gainful employment wages in the two-year space are reporting this wage here. And then finally, what you can see down here is uh, uh, kind of a, you know, where we're taking a little bit of a, a negative hit here is uh, a lot of people asking for some pretty high-level training in computer programming here. Uh, so maybe not the best fit a little bit there, but on the other hand, there is a lot of completers coming out at the certificate level, so that kind of balances out. And, and that's kind of how that works. Now, another thing that you might wonder is if, uh, well, what's the competition? I love this tool, so if you're going to use any tabs, I'd really say program rank, uh, more importantly, program scorecard, but let's scroll over here to uh, competitors. So what I love about this is you can see all the competition in the space. So right now we are dialed in for our current market is Maricopa County. So you can see who else uh, is in this space in Maricopa County. And let's say we just want to see who else is in the two-year space. You click on that and bam, you see all these uh, competitors that we have here. Not really, most of these are collabor collaborators for us. Okay, so if you click on any of these, it's pretty dynamic. But if you wanted to see national, which I really like to do, in the national two-year space, how many completers are possible in a two-year program? So you see this Diablo Valley College here with a lot of completers uh, uh, year over year in that space. You kind of see some other folks here. Austin uh, Community College District, you, you see their certificate program with 63 uh, completers last year. So uh, really kind of interesting to kind of see from that perspective uh, where we rack and stack uh, nationally. So I like to benchmark a lot of times to see, you know, what are the, the, the top 10 programs in this space. And then, you know, you could just switch that over and say, I want to look at uh, maybe veterinary technology. And here's the biggest completers nationally. Um, in veterinary technology. And uh, you see here, holy smoke, San Juan College went from very com few completers to 573. Now, one thing about San Juan College is they're running an online uh, veterinary technician program where they have the ability to do the clinical practical stuff uh, arranged through clinical partners uh, throughout the country. So uh, they really ramped that up, and now look at all those completers coming out of that space. Uh, you see Pima Community College here, a com uh, competitor down south, uh, down in Tucson, and the number of completers are getting out of their program. So just uh, really interesting data uh, on here. All right, so that's kind of it. Uh, now once you have these things dialed in, I can go back to the scorecard. And now I'll see the, uh, the vet tech one pulled up because that's what's in the system. So let's see if that comes up here. Uh, it's working with a lot of data points, and so depending on your connection, it might take a little longer. Here, vet tech, you see, scores a 20 overall. Uh, that's kind of in the 90th percentile, so it's a good program for us. Uh, it gets an 8 on... Uh, on student demand and now you, you have to sort of look at this sometimes uh, you might not have something with a lot of uh, uh, with a lot of data points uh, for example if the participating colleges in your market area aren't collecting inquiry data that could uh, negate some ability to collect uh, data here here you can see there's a lot of requests on on that uh, Google search analytics uh, they only track Google search on the top 200 uh, uh, programs in terms of completers nationally. So some of the smaller programs like perhaps biotech or geospatial, um, you know, there might not be Google search analytics on some of that stuff. So 
if you're kind of getting lower scores and you want further interpretation, uh, just don't don't hesitate to uh, contact me. You know, and uh, and you know I can provide some additional data. So I'm just updating the market to Maricopa County again. I'm gonna take a second to refresh. There's Maricopa County. I thought those numbers were pretty big while we we're just looking at there. All right, so um, so that's that. Uh, you know, and lastly. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out uh, to the Office of Deans of Instruction. Uh, you know, both uh, our, our administrative assistants are trained in in uh, providing some assistance here, and you can reach out to me, and I'm happy to uh, share more information as needed. Well, thank you, and have a good day, and uh, uh, happy happy labor marketing. <laughs>